A pleasant good afternoon to all of you. Greetings from Taiwan. Uh, it's so lovely to be able to be with you, worship with you on this first Sunday of December. Three more Sundays and it will be Christmas. Are you joyful? <laughs> Are you expectant? There was once um, two mothers. They were celebrating the second birthday of uh, one of the sons of one of the ladies. So they were there, there were decorations, they have, you know, uh, good food in a fancy restaurant. And then somebody dropped by who knew these two women and said, what's happening here? What's all this fuss about? So they told her, oh, one of the women said, it's a birthday, the second birthday of my son. So that friend said, oh, then where's your son? She said, oh, I left her at home because he's, he is so naughty. If he's here running around, we, we could not talk and enjoy the food. Funny, isn't it? But how about us? Where is Christ in the whole picture of Christmas? Is Christmas still Christmas without Christ? I remember when I was small, I was always excited about the coming of Christmas. Back in the Philippines where I was born and raised, we had at least three weeks of vacation and I could then see my older brothers and sisters who were already married and working and they could only come home once a year on Christmas. Of course, there are lots of gifts, sumptuous food, fancy decorations, and lots of fun Christmas activities. But as I grew up, especially when I became a pastor, Christmas one was one of the busiest times of the year. Right, Pastor Nathan? No, uh, evangelistic Christmas programs, children's Christmas parties, youth, youth retreats, Sunday preaching, caroling, gift giving at orphanages and squatter areas, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I slowly found out that my focus was on so many things that I had to do and slowly lose that simple wonder, amazement and excitement for Christmas. Dear brothers and sisters at SYCBC, are we busy preparing and participating with Chris, our, in Christmas activities? So much so that we have forgotten who is the celebrity of our Christmas celebration. The main character of Christmas is not Santa Claus, nor the angels, but he who was born in the manger and who died on the cross for us. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we celebrate Christmas, help us, Lord, to refocus on Jesus Christ, the reason for the season, the main character of Christmas. Dear Lord Jesus, heaven, please help us today through your word to refocus and fix our eyes on you we commit to you the rest of this time please be with us take control not only of our hearts but even of all the equip equipments and facilities that we are using and even the internet and everything in here so that we would be focusing on you and lord that you will be able to speak to us in a personal way all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. During the 1968 Olympics in Mexico City, the last runner to finish marathon was an athlete from Tanzania by the name John Stephen Aquari. It was a very difficult race for him. He fell, he stumbled, he was injured, and he even had a broken leg. A lot of the runners, 18 out of the 75 runners, has actually pulled out because it was a difficult race for them as well. The lack of oxygen in the air, 
made the already grueling task of running even more challenging. But then a quarry kept on going on and on and on. Even after the other runners had finished the race and had gone home. Finally, after a very long time, at seven in the evening, he finally reached the near empty stadium. But there were still about 7,000 people who were there, and they witnessed how he finished the race without giving up, without quitting. So they all stood up and gave him a standing ovation. Let's watch a short video of a quarry. The reigning African champion. He'd beaten the eventual gold medalist, Wilder, before, but had never run in conditions like this. Like many of the others, he'd struggled with cramp through much of the race. But for a quarry, cramp and fatigue were the least of his worries. He'd suffered a painful fall, sustaining injuries to his knee, his shoulder and head. Problems that would have most of us screaming for the emergency room and a cocktail of painkillers. Not a quarry. Rather than pull out of the race, he got his knee strapped up and kept on going. Asked afterwards what prompted him to keep going, he said, My country did not send me 5,000 miles to start the race. They sent me 5,000 miles to finish the race. And that's exactly what he did. My dear brothers and sisters, as we look into the future, we will also meet a lot of obstacles and challenges, even uncertainties for the coming new year. We can choose to pull out like the 18 quitters in the race, or we can be the aquaries of our time and keep going to finish the race. The author of Hebrews is concerned that the first century believers will become discouraged and give up their faith. So he wrote this letter to encourage them. He says in Hebrews 12, verses 1 and 2, and I read, the reigning Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the scene that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race Mark out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. This passage also speaks to us today and tells us an important message as we celebrate Christmas and as we welcome 2024, let us focus on Jesus. The author of Hebrews uses an analogy familiar to his readers to encourage them to continue the race. A Christian is like a runner and he needs to look three ways. First, he needs to look around to see that he is being surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Secondly, he needs to look inside to see the things he needs to do. Thirdly, he needs to look up and fix his eyes on Jesus. First, we need to look around. The first half of verse 1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, this first half verse reminds us of the amphitheater in ancient times, wherein spectators are seated around to watch. But the author of Hebrews tells us that we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. They are not spectators who are here to watch and be entertained. They are here to bear witness to God's faithfulness 
and encourage us to remain faithful. The word therefore at the beginning of the verse connects back to the faith chapter in Hebrews 11, which tells us, by faith, Abel, by faith, Enoch, by faith, Noah, by faith, Abraham, and so on. We have this many Hebrews of faith that our God is faithful and trustworthy. They also run the race and experience many difficulties and sufferings like us. And yet, they fought the good fight, finished the race, and kept the faith. As we look back at our own faith journey, we thank God for the people who brought us to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. It may be your parents or grandparents, your pastor, your friend, your office mate, or your neighbor. My dear brothers and sisters, it's now our turn to be faithful witnesses to the generations after us. May the Lord also find us faithful. Secondly, we need to look inside. Not only are we to look around, but we also need to look inside. As we do that, there are three things we ought to do to ensure that we continue the race. The second half of verse one says, let us throw off everything that hinders, number two, the sin that so easily entangles. The third thing is let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let's review. So there are three things we need to do as we look inside. We need to lay aside every hindrance. We need to throw off entangling sin. And we need to run with perseverance. My dear friends, as we minister together at SYCBC, let us be cautious that our individual differences, idiosyncrasies, biases, and personal preferences do not hinder us from serving together. A lot of times our trouble, our problem is not with lack of strong leaders, but with leaders who are more concerned with their own personal agendas than with the Lord's glory. Are we entangled with sin that dishonors God and negatively affect our ministry? Do we persevere despite all the problems we are facing in our lives, in our community, in our world? Or are we throwing in the towel and quitting when the going gets tough? We are reminded that in order to continue to grow and have a breakthrough, we need to pause for reflection, confession, and evaluation, both individually and corporately. Third, we need to look up to Jesus. The author of Hebrews they not only want us to look around and to look inside, but he also wants us to look up to Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. He says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. The word rendered fix our eyes is actually to look, but it is a kind of looking that is intent and with full attention. Thus, NIV says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. We have to focus on Jesus and not be distracted by anyone or anything. To stay focused is very crucial for the runner. As he runs, he won't be gazing around or looking at the audience. He won't even dare look back and check how far ahead he is from his rival. Doing so would not only slow him down, 
but he might even stumble and fall. The runner is focused on the finish line. Just as we are still on the race of faith. Dear brothers and sisters, we should stay focused on the finish line where Jesus Christ is waiting for us. Just as Peter was able to walk on water as his gaze is upon Jesus. But the very moment when he saw the wind, he became afraid. That's the moment when he began to sink. So it is with us. If we turn our eyes away from Jesus. It is my prayer that you and I will have a, an extra special Christmas this year. That we celebrate Christ as the reason for the season. The celebrity of our celebration. Let us make each of our hearts a Bethlehem to welcome the Lord Jesus and let him be the king in our hearts. He did not only come to be born as a babe in a manger, but he also came to die on the cross. And he will one day come again as the king of kings and the Lord of of lords a blessed christmas to all of you thank you so much